Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel and thank you so much for joining me this week. So I have actually talked about the seven tenets of concept-based mathematics before, but I thought I'd make a more updated video because I made that a few years ago. So if you're interested in finding out what the seven tenets of concept-based mathematics are, then please keep on watching. Okay, so I'm just going to move myself out of the way and I'm going to talk about the first tenant here, which I talk about a lot in terms of mathematics. And that is that mathematics is a language of conceptual relationships and therefore we are content driven discipline. What does that mean? So everything that we study in mathematics is a concept, which means it's timeless, it's abstract to varying degrees, it's universal and it's transferable. And we can say that concepts are organizing ideas where examples share common attributes. And so if we think about mathematical concepts such as rate of change or factorization or even the concept of area and volume, everything that we study in mathematics is a concept. So that's the first tenant that everything in mathematics is a concept. And so we are a language of conceptual relationships. And there is a lot of concepts that come from the content of mathematics. Okay, so the second tenant is that we actually adopt an inquiry-based approach. So all instruction and learning experiences is focused on questions and encourages explorations that allow for conceptual understandings. Now that means that we as teachers are not the answering machine where we walk around the classroom spitting answers out, but we provide beautifully structured, designed learning experiences to allow students to be able to arrive at their own conceptual understandings. And that actually leads me to the next tenant. So the third tenant is that all learning is inductive as much as possible. And that means that we give our students specific examples at the beginning of any learning cycle so that we can then allow students to generalize based on those examples that they've seen before. We want all our learning experiences to be designed around an inductive learning approach. Now, the fourth tenant is really about the depth of the units and unit planning. So in a concept-based model, we encourage teachers to collaboratively plan units based on the generalizations, those important conceptual ideas. And again, to reiterate, we do not share generalizations or those conceptual ideas with students. In other words, we use inductive learning approaches to help students arrive at those important understandings for themselves. And that the units, the unit of inquiry, actually reflects a lot of depth of understanding. The fifth tenant is that we actually try to showcase the creativity and the beauty of mathematics. And sometimes that is neglected. I find that sometimes we fall into this pattern that mathematics is either right or wrong. But there are actually multiple pathways and there's a lot of beauty and creativity in mathematical problem solving, in the mathematics itself. Sometimes we want to really showcase the creativity and the beauty of mathematics and not neglect that part of it. Tenant six is about the processes. And of course, we do have processes in mathematics. We have content and we have processes. So we have processes in mathematics and different strategies and skills actually make up processes. Processes are like problem solving or creating representations or making connections. And I want to stress that, yes, we have processes, but most of the concepts in mathematics actually come from the content. So you'll see in this little pie chart that the processes complement. So in this little sector here, the actual concepts that come from the content here. And now let's me move myself over to this side so we can see the last tenant. The last tenant is the interconnectedness. And I've had several conversations with different departments about how learning and units are planned to showcase the interconnectedness of the nature of mathematics. So it is very rare that we would only use one branch of mathematics to solve any kind of problem. Normally, mathematics problems always involve different branches. For example, it's almost impossible to teach any kind of geometry without any kind of measurement or any kind of algebra. 
And I always like to encourage teachers when they're looking at fractions, decimals and percentages to always bring in that topic of handling data so that students can do lots of experiments, look at probability and then express those probabilities either in fractions, decimals or percentages. So here are the seven tenets. First, that mathematics is conceptual and it's a conceptual language. Number two, we adopt an inquiry-based approach and we encourage exploration. Number three, we also design inductive learning experiences to allow students to generalize for themselves. Number four, there is the depth of understanding in units where we plan units collaboratively. Number five, we showcase the creativity and the beauty of mathematics. Number six, we have processes, but we don't want to overemphasize those. So there's processes that complement all the concepts that come from the content of mathematics. And number seven, very importantly, that mathematics is interconnected. So we don't teach shape and space in isolation, for example, of measurement. We actually try and interconnect all the maths topics together in one unit. So I hope you found this video useful. There are the seven tenants. Uh, I did release a video quite a few years ago on this, but I thought I'd re-release this with some more explanation and rationale of each of these tenants. If you have any questions, please feel free to put it in the comment section below. Thank you so much for joining me this week, and I hope to see you next time. Bye!